Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be back here with you. And we have a very special guest today. Her name is Alicia Barr. She is a sales and marketing expert. And she's also known as the client whisperer. I want to give you full disclosure in that I have personally worked with Alicia. She has helped me put together sales webinars, sales pages, sales emails. Um, she's trained me on how to sell. And I can tell you from my personal experience that she has helped me tremendously overcome fear of sales, overcome all kinds of stuff that we will talk about today and you will learn a lot about issues that you have around selling and how to overcome those easily. Alicia has also sold millions in revenue in the corporate world, but she got tired of the BS and transitioned to running her own business coaching. She was coaching solopreneurs and sales professionals with her unique, and it is unique and awesome, sales and marketing approach. She firmly believes you don't have to be a bad person to be good at sales. Oh, I love that phrase. You have to be a bad person to be good at sales. And she has the results to prove it. And we, she has a lot of results. So Alicia, welcome to the Dare to Leap podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Kathy. I'm so excited to be here with you. So if you are not watching this on YouTube, if you are listening to it on podcast. At some point, make a note to yourself or just switch over now and watch this on YouTube because we have a little surprise for you today. Alicia and I are both wearing fascinators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw Kathy's and I was like, wait, should I put mine on? And she, <laughs> she said, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I love a reason to dress yeah. up. <laughs> That's right. And Alicia <laughs> also told me she has a unicorn hat that she could put on. So Alicia, we may have to do another episode where we both wear our unicorn hats because I have one too. Oh, perfect. That would be really fun, actually. <laughs> that would be really fun. <laughs> so we'll have to talk about um, how to be the unicorn of selling or something like that with that one. But today like we're going to fascinate. Yeah, today we're going to fascinate you. So Alicia, will you um, start off by telling everybody a little bit more about you and anything you want our listeners to know? Yeah. So I'm a sales and marketing coach and, um, I, I'm releasing a course in January, um, on the Ooh. secret art of subtle selling. So I'm going to do a huge masterclass, um, leading up to it that, uh, and ramping up my group sales is not a dirty word in the meantime, where you can ask any questions and I'll help you with your specific situations. So, um, really excited to finally launch that up to this point. I really just did one-on-one -on -one coaching. So this will help me impact people on a, on a bigger level. And I mean, I, I just like offering relief to people who feel weird about sales or like are the methods that other people teach aren't working because there are alternative options and you, and you don't have to, you know, sell with pain and be weird. And that salesperson that you hate. Yeah. So if you're somebody, um, right now, I want you to check yourself and see, are you one of those people who think sales is a dirty work? who think sales can only work if it's slimy or pushy or hurtful. Because if that's you, I want you to, to open up your mind because what you're going to learn from Alicia today is how to do this in a way that feels good, both to you and the person you're talking with. Yeah, exactly. So Alicia, let's jump into that. Um, one of the things that you shared with me is that we can sell with hope and not with pain. So could you give a description so people really understand what that is? When people sell with pain, and I know because I have been sold to with pain to the point where I cried 
on the it's call. Like the ultimate goal. Cried. It's right. So awful. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that old school way of selling where it's focused on pain and then your philosophy of selling with hope. I'm so sorry. My dog is barking. Can you hear it? That's okay. Mine will bark soon. I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I can barely hear it. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, the pain selling that is popular these days is like really making somebody realize that the reason that they're in this awful situation that they're in is because they have made the wrong choices up to this point, what those choices looked like, how bad it is, what kind of shame and things are you missing out on because of this awful place that you're in. And then it's like, well, if you don't take my solution, then you're not serious and um, you're going to continue to have a horrible life. <laughs> so it just feels <laughs> really awful. Yeah. And you're not, ex- you're not exaggerating. I mean, that's why I cried yeah. with this salesperson that had me on the phone. I cried because the I was pressure. like, oh my God, my <laughs> life is horrible. My life sucks and it's going to keep sucking. <laughs> yeah. So um, although it's important to talk about what's going on, and the challenges that you've had, because that's just good information to know um, so that you can kind of position yourself against it and understand what's going on. Okay. So that's why you're looking into this because you already tried that and it didn't work and you did it this way. So that's why, and we can do it this way as a result of having that information. So it's really about understanding what somebody went through, but then moving them to the other side, like it's okay it's okay. I know that you feel like you've made mistakes. Everybody has. And now we're going to move away from that life. Like this is what it's going to look like. And it's going to be so much better. And I'm so excited for you to have this wonderful experience and the hope for what your life can look like and really painting that and not hammering home that like you're stupid and you make terrible decisions and like this and that it's like, look, everybody makes mistakes. Let's not focus on it. It sounds like I would have done the same thing if I was in your shoes, the way that person presented it. Um, I can understand why you made that choice, but this is why it didn't work out. And this is how we're going to do it different now. And so it's just a really like, you want to infuse hope and confidence. You want that. I, I found that more people buy when they feel good than bad. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, one of my values is, um, um, my values are bringing joy and happiness to myself and to others around me and hope, um, especially in this era where we're going through COVID. I mean, every, there's so much pain already. There's so little hope already that if you go into selling and, and, oh my gosh, that word shame that you just brought up, Alicia, that's the worst thing you can make people feel is shame. Well, and with pain, with pain selling, they really do. It is like, it's shame selling. Um, And it just like, if a lot of people feel really awkward delivering it too. So if you feel weird about what you're doing in your sales process, I can promise that the prospect also feels weird. Um, If you feel good, your prospect feels good. So you can use that as a barometer. of, Mm -hmm. Of what you're doing. So for example, the the webinar that you helped me to create um, really did focus on hope. Yeah, we start by talking about what, where are you right now and what kind of issues are you living with right now that you wanna change? And then what kind of future you can see for yourself, right? And that's the hope part. And, you know, I said that I cried whenever I was on this call with somebody that made me feel pain and shame. I love it when people cry from the excitement that they get from the hope that they now have, the joy that they feel. What about that? Yeah, I think that's way more fun. It's a rewarding experience. (laughs) Even if they don't move forward with you because they can't afford you really or anything, it's like at least this person hopefully has the inspiration to change things around and they will come back to you and they will refer you because they associate you with a solution, a positive feeling. And I mean, it's just empowering people to know that like, you're not broken. Like you're not a hot mess. You're no different than anybody else. And you have the power to change this. And how exciting is it? I'm so glad we found each other. And I'm so glad I can help you realize how amazing your life can really be. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I love that uh, what you just said, you're not broken. I actually have a um, meme that I use that says, you're not broken. It's the mirror. Oh, I love that. That's broken. Yeah. Really I'll send like it to that. you if you want. I guess um, it. One, a, a colleague of mine, Sarah Pikai, came up with that phrase and I had um, my graphic artist, Dan Rondo, create that. It's really cool. Look, I'll send that to you so you can use it if you want to, because I love that because yeah. so many of us think it's us that's broken, right? Yeah. And it's really often the mirror that's re- that we're reflecting ourselves in. And that mirror can be your mom, your dad, your toxic cousin, your toxic friend, it's that mirror that's reflecting back to you that's broken, not you. It's all about a frame of reference. So like, what is your reference point? I have a quote that I really like where it's like, don't compare your behind the scenes to someone's feature film. And I can- Oh, I love that. I can guarantee you, <laughs> I've worked with enough people at this point that even the most successful, accomplished people, it is a hot mess behind the scenes. They doubt themselves. <laughs> they have bad days. They think, what the hell am I doing? And why does anyone trust me? They're thinking all mm-hmm. the same things as you. We are not unique That's in those right. thoughts at all. So mm-hmm. it's really about like the frame of reference that you have and realizing that you're probably doing way better than you give yourself credit for. Yeah, exactly. And um, so what you're talking about there, I think, it, it is comparing yourself to others. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a bad idea all the way around, don't you think? It always is. And we know that logically. So I think it kind of makes it like we know it's the root of misery, but I feel like it helps a little more to understand that you don't even have the whole story. You're comparing yourself to something that's not even like, the facts. So not only is it the root of all misery, so don't do it. It's like, you don't even, you're not even doing an accurate comparison kind of thing. Yeah. Really good point. So say that quote again. I love it. I want to hear it again. Don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's feature film. Yeah. Because you have seen behind the scenes of your arm and you're living behind the scenes, right? And you know what it's really like back there, but you look at the other person's feature film, you don't see behind the scenes. And most people won't let you see behind the scenes. And, and that's their choice. They don't have to let you see that. Right. Um, me, I, I, got, I put it all out there. <laughs> but just know, even if they're not showing you, I can say with 100% confidence, every one of them is like, I am garbage, at least sometimes. <laughs> right. Right. We or all have like doubt. me, I shared, I shared with you when we started, um, that, uh, you know, because we're growing so fast, which is great news, right? And everybody be looking at me going, Oh, look at Kathy, her business is growing. That, that's amazing. And behind the scenes, I'm like, I'm ready to burn this business to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so, because many different- it's so stressful. There's so many different phases of life and business Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you have to adjust and pivot all the time. Like I know that, that another saying that we all know is like the only constant is change, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't make it any less painful when it's happening. And the best thing you can do is, is get help. (laughs) Yeah, I am all about resources. Like who can help me get through this? Like there's no need. You have to white knuckle it alone. And Alicia is a great resource because um, when I was just sharing that with her, I was thinking about burning this to the ground. And I did. I had a couple of days, not even just 24 hours. I had a couple of days of that pity party. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hey, what am I thinking? Because, you know, part of me was like, I'm 63 years old. I could retire. Why am I doing this crazy (laughs) stuff? And then after I got a little more sleep, I woke up and went, oh, I'm doing this crazy stuff because I really want to help these women and because I love the excitement. And you can fix it. How do you feel, Alicia? How do you feel about selling? What's your gut about selling? How can can you help others feel different? Other than thinking that selling is a negative, oh, it's a negative and it's scary and it's all those bad things. How can we shift our mindset to think about selling in a more positive way? Yeah. So a few things, a lot of the time people feel so weird about selling because they've had an experience that is negative and they think that the only way to sell is to be like that person. And so they go so far 180 in the opposite direction that they're actually underselling themselves. Like you're not doing yourself justice. You're like under embellishing. 
Um, and you're not selling anything because of that. And you feel like the other person has this power over you to reject you. But the truth is that person is hoping that you are the solution because then they don't need to talk to anyone else and they can just solve it and move forward. They are not like, Ooh, can't wait to reject this person. Um, I'm going to make a dance monkey, like (laughs) work for it. You know, (laughs) like there are people like that, but I mean, just don't talk to those people. Like I'm not even trying to do the monkey dance. Like most people want a solution. And the other thing is to realize that you're selling all the time in your regular life. And the only reason that you have an issue about it is that you, there's a transaction of money happening. So you feel like you're like gross asking for money, but it's not like that at all. Like, first of all, people don't value things that they don't pay for. So they need to pay for it in order to take it seriously and value you. You're not doing them any favors by undercharging them or discrediting yourself. And you're also hurting yourself. And the other thing is that the conversation is exactly the same as the way you would sell your spouse or your children or your friend on anything. What do you do? You tell them what's in it for them. They do not care about you. They care about themselves. So whenever you're selling somebody else, you're like, look, there's all this stuff that I know you like. It's the same (laughs) thing. You just need to ask the questions to get the information. So, you know, oh, this is what you're looking for. I got it. This is what's in it for you. This is the result you're going to get. And you don't need to talk about anything except the result. Not like the, this is how we're going to get the result. It's just like, you're going to get the baseball game with the hot dog and the beer. (laughs) Wow. That sounds like fun. (laughs) It does. Instead of like, here, this is how we're going to get the baseball game. We're going to go to find this, you know, compare prices against all these things, compare all the games. I mean, you're just like, I'm so bored. Yeah. So, um, a really good example of this just happened with me the other day. Uh, I was talking, I have a mastermind and I was talking with, um, uh, Marie, who's part of my mastermind and she gave me, um, uh, did her presentation for me and she went into great, she does video editing and marketing. And she went into great detail about how they're going to research to find the best topics and the best keywords. And I'm like, I don't want to know any of that. If I'm yeah. going to you to do this. I don't want to know how you're going to do it. I just want to know what I'm going to get at the end. And she's like, oh, I could cut all this out. And I'm like, yeah, cut all that out. Because guess what? My brain shut down. And she was talking about, well, you'll get an intro and an outro and this. I'm like, I don't know what an intro or outro is. (laughs) Yeah. You know, tell me, tell me what it's going to do to help me. How many more clients am I going to get? How many, you know, how, how many more leads am I going to get? All of that. Exactly. And if you are going to mention those things, you want to connect it to the result. So we're going to get, do an intro and outro for you so that you look really professional and your brand is, um, something that people see repeatedly and can remember like, Oh, okay. That's why you're telling me about that. She's probably saying that thinking that you're connecting that dot in your head. You're not right. Connect it for them. Yeah. And Alicia, I learned that from you. Um, And I want to emphasize what you just said, which is whatever that feature is that you're talking about, add in so that and fill in that blank. And then you've got the whole thing. And And then they're like, that's why you made it that easy for me. Good. I'm so glad. (laughs) Yeah. And I love little tips like that. So whatever it is that you're going to say, we're going to do research. And so we're going to get, we're going to do research and do keyword analysis for you. So that you rank your videos rank number one on Google. Ooh, Ooh. now that I want, I, I want to rank number yeah. one on Google. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't want it before, but now I want it. Yeah. And then after you get really good at it, you can even get rid of that first part and just say, working with us, your videos will rank number one on Google. Yeah. Ooh, Cause I don't give a crap how they do it. Right. If they say how you can uh. talk about it, but they're probably not going to say how. Yeah. So great tip. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Another thing that we discovered that I did and still am challenged with doing quite honestly is what you call how to not get in the friend, how to not get friend zoned. So can you talk about that a little bit, what that means and how to prevent it? Yes. 
So this is a really common problem. If you find yourself having great conversations with people and then they don't buy from you, <clears throat> it's because you got friend zoned. So it's really common to be like, man, we had so much in common. It was a fantastic conversation. And then they ghost you or they say no. And they're like thinking, oh, what a great person really liked them, but I'm not going to work with them. And it's because they have no idea how you would help them because you didn't talk about their needs and how you solve them. You talked about all of the other things, like what show you're watching and how you love skiing and dogs and whatever else that is unrelated to their challenge and what you're offering. So rapport is what they, you call that period, which I also call, you know, more layman's terms, shooting the shit portion of the beginning <laughs> of the call. Um, and some people, that, just is, don't. that is the scientific term <laughs> shooting the shit. <laughs> yes. You all know what I'm talking about when I say that, um, it's in the beginning of the phone call and some people don't know how to get out of it. And it really shouldn't last longer than five minutes. And it is a valuable thing to do because it establishes that like, we're two humans here. I'm not a gross salesperson and you're not a weird prospect and we have stuff in common. And it establishes that like human connection that honestly makes the sales call a lot more fun for both of you too. But then you need to quickly transition out of that um, or you'll find your time is gone and you haven't really gotten to discuss anything. So a way to transition out of it is like, I could see that we could talk about this all day, but I really want to respect your time. So tell me what's going on or whatever the first question is that you have, or you can just say, um, okay, great. That's awesome. Well, I really want to respect your time. So let's get into it. Like, and if they really aren't stopping talking, I would recommend saying, I'm so sorry. Can you hold on one minute and come back? You don't have to tell them what you went and did. Ooh, you might've gone to the bathroom. You might've let, let a dog out. Like it's none of their business. You don't need to tell them. So you can come back and blow your nose. You can yeah. blow your nose. <laughs> yeah. You can interrupt them and say, I'm so sorry. Just give me one moment. Yeah. Wow. That is such a powerful tip right there. Just that. Yeah. Cause there you are, are full people. of these. You're not <laughs> yeah. full of it. You're full of these. <laughs> There are those people that like, just, you know, you can't get a word in and you feel That's like me <laughs> and you feel like you have to like comment on what they're saying. Like you can't just be like, okay, anyway, cause then you feel rude. Right. So yeah, that's a great transition. Could you give me just one minute and then you come back and the, uh, then, then when you come back, you can say, let's get into it. Like you, yeah. like you said, yeah, exactly. Um, sometimes what I say is, um, let's see if you see how you can tweak this. Um, let's see. <laughs> I just forgot how I say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can you tell me what it is, what, what you want to be sure we accomplish today? What do you oh. want to be sure we accomplish on this call? Yeah. So the first question I like to always ask is what inspired you to book this call? Ooh, even better. I love inspired. You get all the deets. They're like, well, this is what's going on. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I liked about what you're doing. Blah, 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 blah. But I do think I like your intention behind that question. So I think that maybe a better version would be like, um, what can we cover today that would be most useful for you? Or more, I like or that, but I like yours better. I'm going to use yours. Yeah. What inspired you to book this call? I love that. And then it usually, you can like lead into things kind of from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like, wonderful. Because yeah, cool. they're going to tell you a whole lot right then. Yeah. I saw your ad and then I was going through this thing and blah, 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 blah. It's just the whole story. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, Alicia, I shouldn't be surprised that you're dropping these little gems every step of the way here, but I absolutely love it. And this is how easy making sales can be, right? This is how easy getting new clients. This is how easy selling your product can really be. Yeah. When you learn these tips from Alicia, somebody that has a big heart like Alicia and you guys, she is always like this. Um, <laughs> 
we've we've been working together over a year now off and on and you've always been just amazing and i value you so much thank you so much i really don't like holding back value like i know that some people do that but the truth is like if you can get a little win with something that i'm sharing you sharing with you it's like just imagine what it'd be like if i was working with you oh hell yeah yeah (laughs) alicia do you remember how we met yes megan conter Ah, uh, in the dames. Yes. So Megan, Con- well, was it the dames? Cause I think she maybe hadn't created it yet, but y'all were in some other networking um, thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I was yeah. in improv- Megan Conter is one of the best. She's one of the best networkers that I have ever met. She is a genius networker. She has mastered it. I met her in yes. improv class. Oh, <gasps> I did not know that. Yeah. Was do so you fun. still do improv? I mean, the pandemic isn't very improv friendly, but I, (laughs) I love it. I would love to do some zoom improv with people. I think that'd be hilarious. Well, okay. You just gave me an idea. Um, I got to talk to you about this afterwards. Cause okay. You know, we put on events and the more fun we can have the better. So we may have to talk with you about being a presenter at our next event. I would love to. And we always do a virtual event at the end or a virtual happy hour, one of the (laughs) nights. And you could do a little improv. That would be so much fun. That would be so fun. I mean, some people get really scared about it, but it's always fun, even if they're scared. Like afterwards, they're like glad that they did it. And it's one of the best things you can do for sales. Like, cause you just learn to stop thinking so much and instead Ooh. really hear the other person and have a normal response. Mm, interesting. So yes. I listened to Conan O'Brien's podcast. Do you listen to his podcast? No, Conan O'Brien great. needs a friend. Oh my God. It's fabulous. Oh. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. And basically what he does in every podcast is, and you need to be on that podcast. I'm telling you right now, basically what he does is he does improv for an hour with that whoever his guest is. Yeah, it is oh my God. It. He's having, I laugh. I listen to it when I'm taking a bubble bath and I come out and my husband's like, I thought you might drown in there. You were laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> And I am so sorry. My phone is ringing so much. I do not want to know what's going on here. You're just <laughs> but, um, in demand. <laughs> he says that improv is whatever that the other person says. And then you go, and. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. the, uh, the whole thing is you're supposed to say yes. And Whoa. so you can't at any point um, negate what the other person says. So if they're like, Oh my God, the abominable snowman. You have to say yes. And he's wearing a tiny hat. Like you have to build on it. <laughs> and eventually you don't have to say yes. And it's just like the, the way you first get into it. I think there's an emergency that somebody <laughs> has that's trying to get through to us. I'm so sorry. For Is the there someone ringing. else that can answer the phone? Do you need to take the call? Yeah, no, I don't need to take the phone. So, um, so here's an aside, a little more insight into my life. Um, I have, you know, we don't have cell service here, so I have to have a landline. My husband who is retired at his full-time job now, and I am not kidding when I say this, I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm, I'm telling the truth is being on the phone, talking to his friends and family every single day. Wow. So I'm not kidding you. So we have two lines because of it. Cause as soon as he gets up, he's on the phone all day long. Oh my God. What and... is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely does he... nothing. <laughs> does he have like so many family and friends? Like that seems like it would be so repetitive. Yes, he does. Not... Okay. <laughs> yes, he does. The Guggenauer is very close knit. And um, so both of the, one of those calls was, um, and we have, so we have two lines hit the one that he uses and one I use and one rolls over to the other. So if one's busy, it just rolls over to the other. Uh, And, and our kids, you know, we have grown kids, Tony and um, Tom, and they're in their fifties and they call almost every day. Tony calls every day. And Tom junior calls occasionally. One of those was Tony got to get in. If he doesn't get in on one line, he calls the other and he keeps doing it until somebody answers. And then the other one was Tom's cousin, who he also talks to every day. 
Oh my God. And, and they're I'm, just, they just I want know. to say hello. Just, just, Hey, how you doing? That's kind of sweet though. It is very sweet. They love each other very much. They stay in contact and I don't have to do it because I don't like to talk on the phone. So anyway, sorry about that aside, but that's just a little glimpse into my life. And I am glad my husband stays in touch with people. You know, most men don't really have super close friends. I and find, it, especially men, my husband's age, he's 72. Um, but he does, he has a very close friends. Well, and, and your, son, your sons, most of the time, sons, you don't hear from them. So that's, that's really, mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and our grandkids and, you know, he, we get a lot of people he's got to keep in touch with. Cause I don't call anybody. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of time, man. It's a lot of time and effort. <laughs> is my issue. Like, I want to talk. It's not that I don't, I just have other stuff I got to do. And I'm talking, all, talk. I'm talking all day. So I'd like to yeah, not talk. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for going off on that rant with me. So let's come back. Okay. Oh, I could use your thing. You could use your thing on me. Could you give me just a minute? <laughs> or I could tell we could talk about this all day, but I want to respect everyone's time. Yes. We're going to respect everybody's time. Okay. So there was another thing that you mentioned that you wanted to give a little tip on, talk about a little bit, and it is what you call authoritative empathy. So yes. could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I, I have found that empathy is one of the most undervalued tools in sales. So people have a very deep need to feel heard and understood. And it so rarely happens um, that you get that feeling. But if you feel like someone understands you, then you feel like they can help you. If they don't understand what's going on, how are they going to help you? So there's a lot of trust built there. And there's a common confusion with empathy being me too. And it's not me too. It's not, I'm the same way. Oh, I love the same things. Oh, my grandma does that too. Um, because that feels very gimmicky. And it's, it's not like, or saying the words, I understand how you feel. Anybody could say those words. Empathy is like the ability to expand upon it. So for example, if somebody talks about how, you know, the last agency they worked with was terrible at communication, and, you know, that they, they would go weeks without talking to you. That is really frustrating. I have heard that a lot. I'm so sorry. Um, it's really frustrating when you are paying somebody and you have no idea if your project is getting done in time and if you should just like cut ties and leave them or, um, you know, stay with them because you've already put time and energy up to this point. It's a really tough situation. Then the person's like, exactly. Like they feel so understood, right? And then the authoritative part is to say, that's why we have weekly check-ins um, to make sure that we update you on your progress. So you can bring them to the other side of that. It's it's kind of like the, the hope piece of it, but um, you know, letting them know that you hear them and what they went through, not just parroting back the words to them. Like, yeah, so you had an agency who's bad at communication. Like, that doesn't feel like so understood. I mean, it's a bare minimum. Like, it's better than not addressing it at all. I see people do this, like, rapid fire interrogation feeling like questions where they like, don't say anything about the answer and they just go to the next question and it's, it feels really weird. So at a bare minimum, like, repeating the last few words that they said. But really what's going to help is to let them know that you genuinely understand how that feels like to be in that situation, a feeling word. And, uh, and then not living in that pain, not like, Oh, it's so horrible. Oh, to not know where your money's going. It's the worst blah. Like, no, you just, then you go to the hope side where you're like, that's why we're going to move you over here. So I'm sorry that that happened and you had that experience. And like, I really look forward to changing that for you type of thing. Yeah. So I think you just gave us another easy transition there, which is, uh, and I just, it just went on my head. What did you say? Um, that's why we, that's, yeah, that that's, why we, that's why yeah. we, that's why we do this. Cause we found that that's a common experience and we want to make sure that you have this experience instead or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's also 
really powerful to weave your value into the discovery portion like that, rather than leaving it to the part where you do like your quote unquote pitch, like where you have some monologue where it's just you talking and the person's like, okay, this is the sales pitch. I'm going to sort of like disengage and half listen because I just have some questions that I want to ask at the end and everything they're saying is probably embellished at this point anyway. So I'm going to sort of check out. (laughs) So instead you can weave that value in during the discovery portion with empathy, authoritative empathy. I love that. I love that so much. And the piece of that, and and I'm, I I feel really good about one thing that you said, which is the empathy part. I am really good at, I, do exactly what you suggested. I don't just repeat the words. Yeah. I actually, you know, because one of the things that I've talked with people a lot about is um, hiring a virtual assistant, for example. I get a lot of business owners that come to me and they want to hire a virtual assistant. So I ask them, tell me, um, have you ever worked with a virtual assistant before? Because a lot of times if they have, they come in with um, preconceived burned. notions they got burned and all of that. So if they say, yes, I say, what was that experience like for you? And a lot of times it's, oh my God, it was horrible. They took the money and ran and blah, 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 blah. And then I say, you know, I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, Totally understand how that can happen. Um, And, and that's why we, now I can say that. (laughs) That's why we have this um, guarantee. um, Yes. That you'll be satisfied. That's really good whatever. Yeah. And the, the other part of that, and we already talked about shame a little bit, but let's talk about it here too, because I think a lot of times when people share those kind of things with you, they're feeling shame. I know like for me, um, when you talked about the agency, I had a really bad experience with an agency and I actually felt shame around it because I had made a really bad decision to sign a 12 month contract Mm. with this agency. Yeah. And I, I thought, how could I have done that? That is so stupid. And I felt shame around it. So if somebody were to do what you did with me, then I would feel less shameful and more like, oh, it's just a mistake that a lot of people make. It is. It's a really common issue and it sucks, especially with agencies. And I speak about that one specifically because I sold digital services for so long and I was my own digital agency for so long. So that was something that we came in contact with all the time. Um, They get your business. They're really present for the sales part. And then they totally check out when the delivery part happens and um, they're only focused on new sales. So if they got you for 12 months, exactly what happened. I can That's definitely, exactly and 12 months, they're like, woo, we have so long to check out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ladies locked <laughs> my, in. <laughs> the virtual expert on my team who had to work with them because she does the techie work and they were doing the Facebook ads and stuff like that. So, um, you know, they had to work together. She literally would call it, well, they fell asleep again. <laughs> I have to try to wake them up. Yeah. I mean, so it is really frustrating being able to call out what that feels like. It feels a little like a betrayal and it might feel like, how could I have made that decision? But I really don't want you to feel like that because it is so common. And there are things that we have in place to ensure that, that you can feel comfortable knowing that is not going to happen in this situation. Great. Because really where I am now is I am not signing a contract with anybody like that again. Or in Yeah, go ahead. If you did, you would want parameters around if I don't hear from blah, 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 I get to cancel with no penalty or whatever. Yes, right. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I got advice from several different people that said, just uh, walk away from the contract. And I'm like, that's not me. I made this decision. I said, yes, I am going to fulfill my obligation. And it ended up being another job for me to make them do the work. You could just be such a hellacious client that they would want to split <laughs> ties with you. They're I, like, we're going to let you I out almost, of this contract. I almost got to that point. I really did. And a couple of times I said to them, are you ready to fire me? If I were you, I would fire me. Yeah. <laughs> they never fired me. <laughs> Man. Uh, and you know what that reminds me of, Alicia, is when I was in the corporate world and you know, I was told I left and smiled too much. And people were getting buyouts at that time, okay? And 
I went to them and I said, what do I have to do to get a buyout? What do I have to do to be whatever they called it at that time where they let you go um, and gave you a little bit of money to go away? And they said, we well, have to be a really bad employee. And I said, how do I do that? <laughs> 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 and how long do I have to do that? Um, and then I went back to my little cubicle and I thought, oh, crap, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just have to quit. So I did. Yeah. I quit. I didn't get you, anything. You'd have to do it so consistent, like for such a long period of time. It was a lot of effort. I know. Yeah, I know. And then I would feel bad about myself. My integrity would suffer. So I'm glad I didn't. That's one of the things that I love about you. And like my preference for clients that I work with is that they, they take pride in doing a quality job. And if you are mm -hmm. someone who really takes pride in doing a quality job, you couldn't, you just couldn't. Mm -mm, yeah. I couldn't. I really thought about it though. <laughs> I did. It, it does sound kind of fun. <laughs> like me for a little bit, it would be fun. <laughs> but it's yeah. quite a facade to keep up like oh and it was a lot of money too it was it was a whole year salary it was a lot Man. of money I know well, it's, it's what made it so appealing <laughs> all for the best I couldn't do it yeah it yeah. is all for the best you're absolutely right you're absolutely yeah. right so um you can tell I could talk to you all day long but I want to go back to your new program yeah that is called secret the secret art of subtle selling so could you tell us a little bit about what people will gain from that what will they learn what will they be able to do after taking that program with you yeah so a lot of times people are going through a sales process that was created by somebody else who had a different personality and product and audience and that's why it's not working for you. So the thing that you'll get from this uh, course in coaching will be a custom sales process to you, to your personality and your audience and your service or product. So, and it'll, it'll also cover, you know, just how to create that process for you and how to navigate the, the common difficult situations that happen in sales. Like, the person who talks too much, the person who doesn't talk at all, the, I have to talk to my spouse objection or my partner or whatever. Um, it gives you the tools to navigate around those conversations and still end up, if they're a good fit working with the person. Um, so, and you know, there's even marketing in it, like how to attract your ideal customer, how to position yourself a certain way. And then the coaching will be very custom to you too. Like you'll every week, um, you'll be able to ask me anything and I'll help you with it. Uh, if you have a question about some you're experiencing or something you want to do with your offer or, um, a market you're thinking about focusing on or whatever, um, I'm there. And as you can hopefully tell, I will do everything I can to make sure that you are really successful and happy about what you're doing. It's, something that's different. It's not just about making money. It's like, okay, when I first start working with a client, like who do you enjoy working with? Not just who pays you the most money, but what do you enjoy doing? And who do you, I know you do this too, Kathy. You're oh, really yeah, good at this. Absolutely. Yeah. It's and it's just, it's so important. Um, and then how do we do more of that? Yeah. So um, if somebody is listening to this right now and they're like, I'm not going to take that course because I don't want to sell. Yeah. Tell so them the truth. Tell them the truth. So if that's <laughs> happening, um, there's a few things. First of all, if you are actually going to do a good job for your clients, then you are doing them a disservice by not properly communicating what you can do for them to them. They are going to end up working with somebody who's better at that part and worse at delivery, like the agency that Kathy worked with. So you're not doing they were anyone really good at selling. <laughs> yeah. You're not doing yourself or other people any favors. And then also, if you don't want to sell, then you must not want to make any money. <laughs> like if you want to make money, you have to know how to sell. And honestly, the things that I talk about in the uh, secret art of subtle selling absolutely apply to life situations, communicating with your boss, communicating with your partner, with your family, with your friends, you are constantly selling. It's about positioning things a certain way 
so that you move, things move forward the way you would like. So it's life. I mean, I know people say that sometimes, but it's so true. It's life skills. Yeah, absolutely. So please, please, please hear what Alicia is saying. If you're like, oh, no way. I am not going to sell. I'm not going to learn how to sell. You are del- diluting yourself right now. I'm, I don't mean to be shaming you at all. That's not at all where I'm going here. I just want you to know that you are sticking your head in the sand because every day in ev- almost everything you do, you are using that S word, selling. You really are. Well, and one of the things that I often like to point out is like, well, what is your alternative? So if you have an alternative that's going to achieve your goal, get on with it. That's great. Rock on. But if you don't, so the alternative is I'm just not going to be able to establish any boundaries with people. I'm going to undercharge for my service. I'm going to have too many clients and not enough money. If that is your alternative plan, then that's, you know, a state of misery. If you're okay with that being your, your goal, then, then go for it. But if you want something else, you got to, then you're, like Kathy said, it, it is a delusion to think that there's another way that you could get there other than learning how to position yourself better so that you charge more. And sales can honestly be pretty, it's fun. Like clients are fun. Yeah. They're like my family. I mean, people are interesting and diverse and crazy. And there's a lot of fun to be had yeah. in a conversation um, with, with other people. It's just now we get to work together too. So it's even more fun because yeah. you're making money. <laughs> so if that word selling is a turnoff to you, perhaps think of it as um, how are you going to develop relationships, right? Yeah. Because that really, the secret art of subtle selling, that's developing relationships. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you think about staff, you have to sell them on doing stuff like with you and for you. Nobody's going to do anything that they're not sold on. So, um, the subtle selling is really helping somebody understand that they want the same thing as you because they usually do. The only reason somebody's not moving forward ever is fear, fear that I'm not going to like it, fear that I, I'm going to make a bad decision, fear that I'm going to fail fear that. So it's just like uncovering what those fears are and really looking at, is this, is this even a possibility of a fear? And usually it's just a big boogeyman that people have made up in their minds. So when you're able to sell, you're able to help people move forward in their life and make decisions and progress. And like, that's a wonderful thing to be part of. It is. So I have a couple of other um, ways to look at this. Uh, three, three that I want to talk about before I let you go. We got like five minutes before you have to be off the call. So one is you, if you have kids and you're trying to get them to do something, guess what? you're selling to those kids. You Can got you talk to about sell that a little bit, Alicia. Oh, you, you got, got to sell, sell to your it. kids. What's in it for them? Why are you going to eat this? And you need to sell them in a way that's not like, uh, cause I'm going to give you this reward. It's like, I always tell my daughter, you're going to feel so much better after you eat. Oh, being full feels so good. I'm so cranky when I'm hungry, like that kind of thing. Like this is for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. So thank you for that. Yeah. And then your spouse, your significant other, I can tell you, I sell, I literally now create, I don't create PowerPoint slides yet, but I actually come up with my plan on how I'm going to sell whatever it is I want to my husband. Like recently behind this curtain is his humongous desk and I want it gone so I can have this whole area. And that desk is like part of my husband. He is like so proud of that desk. (laughs) And I created in my mind how I was going to approach this, how I was going to get him to agree to get rid of the desk. And it took me a month of coming back and listening to what he had to say and then coming back with that and then listen to that again. And guess what? We're getting rid of the desk. So excited. It's got to be subtle, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, everybody does that. Oh, I really want to do this. I got to come up with a strategy. You did this with your parents. That's the one that everyone really. Yes. Yes. How am I going to get Good point. Yes. Yeah. I got to have a strategy ahead of time. Mm-hmm. that's going to make them think mm-hmm. that like, this is all good actually. Yeah. I can go to this party because 
<laughs> I'm actually going to be this person who's going to tutor me and whatever, you know, like, I'll do That's even right. better That's in right. math. That's right. So yeah. since we have to do this our whole lives anyway, in everything that we do, why not learn how to do it in a way that gives people hope, not pain, that um, makes the conversation fun, not painful. Um, and you can learn how to do that by working with Alicia in her new training program, The Secret Art of Subtle Selling. So Alicia, if somebody wants to learn more about The Secret Art of Subtle Selling, where do they go? Please go to my group on Facebook called Sales is Not a Dirty Word. Ooh, I love that. Sales yeah. is not a dirty word. And we will have that link and any of the links that Alicia shares with us in the show notes for this session. Alicia, thank you so much. This was wonderful and fun. I had such a good time, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.